Hello and welcome to your third web scrape tutorial. Today all we're going to be doing is basically splitting up table data and putting it into a readable and basically outputable format. So we can do this in a CSV or JSON but for this purpose we're going to do CSV. Um, so all we're going to do to start basically is grab this URL. All I did was go to Yahoo Finance type in this ticker symbol. So in this case I did AAPL. Um, and in the first page you get to, we're going to be getting table data from here. So, um, the dependencies we're using again, or modules for lack of a better term, um, we're using URLib again to open up URLs, and we're using beautiful soup to parse the HTML. Um, so, all we're going to do to start is URL equals the string of the URL we're going to open up and let's just open it up set an HTML variable and say uh, URL lib to dot URL open now what do we want to open URL and then we want to read it to convert it to a string so let's print HTML to make sure everything's a okay okay we're good so what we want to do next is create a beautiful soup object so the way we do that again is soup equals bs dot beautiful oops spelled something wrong dot beautiful soup and what do we want to pass to it the html and we want to define an lxml parser now again i don't believe you need to define a parse define a parser but there are other ones available as well you should check the beautiful soup documentation if you have further inquiries um anyways so what we want to do now is we want to navigate to this page and we want to look at one of the elements in the table. So we can right click on really anything in the table and we can see that it's split into tags. Okay, this is good. So Google Chrome has a nice feature where you can highlight everything um, with your cursor basically when you go over the tags. So if we go over this one, div ID quote summary, it highlights the entire table. Awesome. We're going to copy that. We're going to use that with beautiful soup to extract the tag. So what we want to say is we'll initialize a variable to it. So table equals soup dot find. Uh, what do we want to say? It was an it was a div element, and we want to say id equals quote summary. Now we could also use find all in this circumstance, but find all is normally for let's say if we want to find every div in the HTML, that's what it'd be used for. So find is perfectly fine here. So let's just print table dot text and see what happens. Awesome, we have our table. The thing we gotta do now is uh, we need to create a readable format with this. And the way we do that is we're gonna split it up by table row and table data. So every table kinda on most basic web pages, um, if you click on these TR elements here, short for table row, you can see it's split up into table data. When we highlight uh, the individual tag, you can see that it's split two into each row. So we can split it as such. So what we want to say to start off, um, we want to find all the rows first. So what, we, what we're going to say is rows equals table dot find underscore all. We want to find all the table rows. And let's print rows dot text to make sure we have all the rows properly. Result set has no attribute. OK. Um, this is actually quite a common error, and this is my mistake. Um, the reason being is what we just outputted is one giant string. So we're going to have to break it up further. So what we want to say is for, um, for row in rows, print row dot text. And this should, okay, there we go. Now that's all of our data right there. Basically, we have our previous close open. Uh, you can see still it's not split correctly. Um, so the way we're going to circumvent that is we're going to say, um, well, first off, what we want to do is we're going to make two lists, right? So we're going to have a label. So we're going to say lab labels equals empty list, and then data equals empty list. Awesome. So what we're going to say is labels dot append. And what do we want to append? We want to say um, row dot find underscore all table data tags within what column? It's going to be the zeroth because this is going to be the zeroth column. This is going to be the first column within the HTML. 
So we want to say that. And then we also want to say dot text. And one thing to keep in mind, we also want to convert this to a string because if we don't, it's going to be Unicode in the list and we don't want that. So let's just do the same thing for data, except say it's in the first. And we're going to say data dot append. Um, what we're finding so let's check it out and make sure everything checks out Wow look at that we have it split cell by cell with all the labels and All the data now what we can do from here is we can create a for loop for tickers and we can actually get list and output it for each one I'm just gonna do a chat a time check Really quick. Um, we're at 543 terrific. That should be awesome. Um, these videos are only gonna be 10 minutes in length so what we'll do right here is we're going to pass tickers as an argument to it. So we're going to make two quotes right there and then plus plus and then put ticker. And at the end, why not? We can just put another one. So uh, we're going to make a list of tickers. So what we can say is APL uh, 3M. Let's just do some really easy tickers. AT&T. Let's say Sprint and let's say Verizon. I'm feeling telecom today for some reason. So what we can say is for ticker in tickers. And let's indent this because Python loves to have stuff indented. So what we can say um, after that is we want to let what we want to say first is we want to import pandas. So we want to. But the reason we want to do this is because we're going to make the columns out of the list here. So all we're going to say is import pandas as PD. Okay. And all we're going to say after this. Um, so for each ticker, we're going to put calls equals. And we're going to put this in dictionary format. Um, we're going to say, we're going to put the name of it first. So let's say label or let's say, let's put field, field and that's going to be dictionary to labels and comma and we're gonna put uh, let's just put data for lack of a better term now so um, and that'll be the data and so all we're gonna do after this is PD or excuse me um, we're gonna put DF equals PD dot data frame and that's gonna be calls so we're just gonna create a data frame out of both of these lists um, and to make sure it works, they're just going to print df.head and see if this works in the loop and make sure everything works right. And look at that. We have a data frame for each individual stock. Um, so this is good. Um, now we can output this as well um, to a CSV format, but I'm going to save that till the next tutorial, I believe. I think we're running out of time here. So. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys learned something today. So all we all we really covered is basically making a for loop for gathering stock data from Yahoo Finance and outputting it to a data frame. Um, one thing that we can do after uh, is basically, I think I have enough time for this. We can say, we can get rid of this and then put uh, df.2 underscore csv csv and then we can pass the ticker as an argument so ticker plus dot csv and let's see if it works okay so on my desktop i should have several csvs or more than several but If we go to date modified and boom, there we go. We have all our data here and we can open it very quickly. Um, and we can verify that everything got in there. So look at that. There's all of our data with an index as well. So that will conclude this tutorial. I hope you guys learned some stuff. Uh, thank you. And please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.